It's seven o'clock on a Tuesday night, and where else would I be but here with you? DJ Stutz here with Little Hearts Academy and Imperfect Heroes podcast. You might hear a dog or two in the background. I am outside in this beautiful, beautiful area, staying with my daughter while we're building a new home for us. So life is good. Um, this week, I have a few things coming on. So before we get started on the podcast and our topic, I wanted to share about our 10 day challenge. So that's gonna start next Monday. So it's 10 days, you're gonna have five live opportunities with us talking about different ideas and concepts and things to help you quit yelling at your kids. And you know they want you to quit. You know you feel better when you're not yelling at your kids. You feel more confident as a parent. And your home just has a whole different spirit about it when you're not yelling at everybody. And so we're gonna help you get on that path. So all you have to do is just go to www.littleheartsacademyusa.com and it's like the third thing down, you'll see 10 day challenge. Click on there, you can register. And here's the fun thing, it's for free. So I've got some people that are already signed up. We're always looking for and welcoming more, the more the merrier. And so I hope that you'll join us for that kind of fun. Now, we are talking today about my episode 56, I think it is. And it's with James Hepner love him and um, we're talking about finding the child within yourself as you are raising the child in your home and it's such an interesting concept that James brings up and he talks about when his kids were little he's got two boys one of them is on the autistic spectrum he's high functioning and but his little guy he'd gotten after him when he was small about 18 months, two years old, and just really gotten out of him and, and mm, more than he needed to. And he went to work, that was during lunch, he went to work and all day he just felt awful about it. And he thought, but if I apologize to this kiddo, I'm gonna lose my authority. And he will turn away from me because he will think that I don't have all the answers. Well, the reality is, is you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. And so he fought with that all day. And finally he came and he apologized to his son. And his son turned around and just gave him the biggest, warmest hug, you know. And then was fine. And actually drew them closer. And that made him realize that, you know, when he looks at it from a child's point of view, when he finds the child within himself and looks at the situation from that point of view, he is going to be able to better understand the situation and better understand what is the way to work it through. Now, we talked about how that doesn't mean that, you know, you give the child everything they want because really from their point of view, they want it, right? But it does mean that you understand that they are truly upset about something. And even though that may not be important to you as an adult, it's important to that child. And so when you look inside and, and say, it's okay to cry, I understand you're upset because A, B, or C happened or didn't happen. You didn't get something you wanted, something was taken away. You got woken up and we have to rush. All of those things can really be upsetting to a child. Well, and to an adult too. How would you like someone coming in in the morning? Get up, get up, we gotta go! And that's your wake up call? Yeah. So when we look at it from our child's perspective and we're able to open our minds to that and we understand it's okay to be upset. We still have to hurry. We still have to uh, go to whatever. Um, we still have to go to brother soccer practice. That's always fun for a kid, right? But, but we understand that they're upset. And when we recognize and acknowledge, I understand that you're upset and I understand that this is not fun for you. And maybe even have a conversation. And I am, I have had experience 
with children as young as three and even two um, to be able to say, what can we do that would make it better? So that if they have to go to brother's soccer game or a uh, piano practice or piano lesson and we're waiting for them, and, you know, oftentimes they're only about a half an hour long, that's not long, you know, enough for you to have to go home and then come back and pick them up. Um, and so that can be hard for a little kid to have to sit through that. Think of that through your child's point of view. I'm bored, this is terrible, it's hot, it's cold, I have nothing to do. And so think about all of those things that come in play for a child's mind. And then think of how we can make it better for the child from their point of view. And another thing that James talks about that I thought was just so amazing, I love, love, loved it, was that he talked about how our life comes in pieces and how there are positive pieces and negative pieces that come into our lives, but both are equally important. Both are equally to be cherished as, how am I going to handle this? What am I learning? And, and enjoy those experiences. Well, I won't say enjoy, but learn from those experiences and value. That's the word I was looking for. But value those experiences equally. And so that we're not scared or put off or, Ugh, this is bad, this is hard. But to say, oh, wow, okay, this is hard. What am I going to either learn from it? How can I make changes? How can I benefit someone else who is going through an equally hard time or maybe this exact same thing that we're going through. And so when he says, may you have peace, uh, or when people say, may you have peace, he says, may you find pieces and the pieces of your life that are around you right now and, and you're experiencing it. So we didn't talk about this in the podcast, and I've thought about it a lot since we recorded it. It's really been on my mind. I really, really enjoyed this interview, and I think it would really be worth your time to listen in. It was just a great interview, and I guess not interview, but conversation more. And But I've thought about you know taking the time sometimes, several times a day maybe, when you just have a couple minutes and just experience the now and what are the wonderful things for now right now i am talking to you and and i am sharing things that i hope will be of value to you i know that they have been of value to me and things that i wish i knew when i was younger and uh that i've come to learn as i get older I am looking at a beautiful landscape. The temperature is perfect. It's not cold. It's not hot. The I am amazed with clouds. And I don't know if you can see these clouds, but they're gorgeous. And I love just looking at the clouds. So I'm not talking about something that would happen five minutes from now or five minutes ago. Where is my now? What am I doing? I'm standing on this beautiful deck of a neighbor because Things were busy at my daughter's house right next door. There's a neighbor that is so kind and thoughtful. They have said, yeah, feel free to come on over and use what you need when we're gone. And they're gone. And so I'm here. How grateful I am for their openness and opportunities. This is my now. When you are dealing with a child that is having a hard time, think about their now. What is going on with their now. And it's so funny how quickly children can go from crying and being upset to laughing and giggling. Isn't that an amazing thing that they can do it so quickly? It's like, wait, where did that come from? Right? Because they're in there now. And so if you can make them laugh or joke around, if you can acknowledge, I see you're really sad. I see you need to cry. Once again, if you've listened to me for very long at all, you know that I don't tell children, stop crying, don't cry. Then it becomes a power struggle because really what can you do to them to make them stop 
crying. It's a ridiculous fight. So instead of saying, wow, you're really sad. I understand that you're upset about X, Y, or Z and that you need to cry. Do you want me to stay with you? Do you want to cry somewhere else? Do you want to stay in the store and cry? We can go out to the car, whatever. But there are things that can make it even worse. So if we're crying in a public place, they may not be able to control it. And people are looking at them, they become self-conscious, they, they become nervous, and it makes it worse and they'll cry harder. Other times, it's just like when you just give, in fact, most of the time, when you just give them that permission to cry, then, oh, I have permission. You're not going to fight me on this? What's with that? And they calm down much faster. And I love the way that we talked about the pieces that come with those things. The pieces of a child that is upset. A pe the pieces of a child that is giddy and excited. The pieces of a child who is uh, loving and, and maybe needs that hug when, in our mind, they least deserve it. But the truth is they always deserve that hug. Doesn't mean that you're giving up your boundaries. It doesn't mean that you're giving in to what they want if it's not appropriate or timely or whatever it is. We all have our reasons that children may not understand. But then think about, we all have our reasons, but do we really? <laughs> Are there times when we could have just said, yeah, let's go do that. And maybe dinner's a little bit late. Maybe, you know, you're not gonna have to watch your show right when you wanna watch it. Maybe you're giving up some things, but really how important is the thing that you're doing right now compared to what your child needs? Are you listening to the child within that says, you know, you could do this. Let's do this and let's have fun. Sometimes it's getting down in the mud. Sometimes it's like my mom would start the sword fights in the kitchen while we were doing dishes with the, with the little dinner knives, you know? Um, it, it's it's silly things that you can have fun with and it's also compassionate time when they're hurting and you're or you're hurting and have you ever had that time when you're just so sad and that child comes up and just snuggles in with you and do you accept that or you're like get away get away I don't or do you let the energy and the love of that child come in and speak to your inner self and say, you are loved. This child loves you. And this child needs to know that you love him or her. <laughs> so anyway, this is a little bit of what we talked about. I hope that you uh, listen in on the episode. It's called, um, what is it? <laughs> it's about using the child within to parent the child that you have with James Hapner, I think, like I said, it's episode 56, and um, it's available now. Hooray! Yeah, it's going to be uh, just a lot of fun, 